Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of the show. It's sunny outside, it's wonderful, we should all be outside, but no, straight away, Michelle's in. Angie's usually the first one who gets his nose in, but Michelle's picked him at the post. There you go. How about that? Not only is this episode 30, can you believe it? We've done this 30 times this year, this particular show. How scary is that? 30, oh my God. But uh, it's also... (laughs) Our second last one. So we finish everything up next week. So you have to make sure that you tune into that. But anyway, we've got a presentation we've got to get to. Uh, it's from Jeffro who's running this one. So Jeffro, before I put it on the screen, do you want to explain what it is that we're doing? Yeah. So basically, I was watching through um, um, episodes of uh, D Space Nine and I thought, well, that Jeffrey Coombs, he's in virtually sort of all the main characters. And then he popped up in a uh, a few other things, and I thought, I wonder how many other actors actually do find themselves in a in a major role, and then sort of uh, get invited back into the Star Trek universe for another role, and maybe slip in for another one. So, this is all about those actors that have uh, had more than one role in the Star Trek franchise. Good to go. So the so the first one we have of course, is the one and only uh, Jeffrey Coombs. So uh, on the uh, the left-hand side was his um, his first role in 1994. That was a character called, called uh, Tyrion. But then the uh, the two standout characters that we got to see were the um, uh, Officer Brunt, who was uh, part of the, uh, the Fringy Treasury. And then, of course, on the opposite side of the universe, we had uh, him playing uh, Wei Yun from the, uh, the Dominion, uh, and to see to see him play such a wide variety of roles was absolutely amazing. And you just completely suspended disbelief that they were uh, uh, the same character. So, uh, wait, there is more. So, uh, if we have a look at the next slide, we will get to see more of Mr. Coombs. So we actually saw him on the left-hand side in uh, 2000, so not long after Deep Space Nine, in a episode of Voyager playing a character called Pink. Uh, we then saw him playing a, a semi-recurring role in um, Star Trek Enterprise as an Andorian called... Uh, what was his name? Shran. What was the character's name? Shran. Very good. Just making sure you knew. Yep. That's right. And then... Um, just to top it all off, in uh, Enterprise yet again, he played a, um, uh, a marauder that um, got aboard the ship, and uh, that character right there is uh, him playing a Ferengi by the name of uh, Krem. So he actually got to play two Ferengis in the, uh, the Star Trek uh, franchise. So I, I think for a lot of fans, yeah, significant amount of roles. Yeah, I think for a lot of fans, Jeffrey Coombs has always been up there as one of the more popular characters, primarily for Way on in D Space Nine. He's done all these other ones, but that was uh, very, very cool. And from there, he went into Enterprise, as you said, with Shran, and he's just kicked all these goals. So I think he's right at almost at the, at the top of most people's lists of dudes that they love seeing in the show. Now, in terms of longevity, I mean, you couldn't go past Majel Barrett. So we saw mm-hmm. her in the original Star Trek series playing uh, Nurse Christine Chapel. And then for the uh, the longest time, sort of, uh, we didn't have any uh, uh, Star Trek at all. And then we had Next Generation. And there was actually a part for her in, uh, in several ways. So she became the integral computer voice for Star Trek. So every time you hear that voice, that's actually her. And not only in Next Generation, but all the other shows that sort of followed through. So she had quite a, a significant um, input there. And of course, uh, she really um, made an impression as uh, uh, Luana Troy in uh, not only uh, Next Generation, but also followed through and made appearances in Deep Space Nine as well. So she um, she certainly is, is Star Trek royalty and, as I said, uh, two great roles there. Yeah, it's actually pronounced Loaxana, and it's a hard one to spell. And I think... Um, and I think yeah. 
the vial will uh, verify this that I think in the pilot, the unaired pilot episode, she was number one as well. Yes, that so, is uh, true. Yeah, so there you go. Just for, just in case people look at it and go, ah, oh, he's missed number one. It's like, yeah, honorable mention. So, uh, yeah, exactly right. Because obviously she was married to Gene Roddenberry. So, uh, mm -hmm. she got the automatic gig. So, very, very cool. There you go. And uh, according to William, she popped up in Babylon 5. It was like, oh, how good. Oh, yeah, she did too. She's one of the bald headed. Um, the wives of uh, Malari. So, yes, well spotted, William. Now, moving on to uh, some of the, uh, the, the the character actors that uh, we, we know. So this this one is uh, Susie Plaxton. So she is a big fan of the uh, convention circuit. And she got her initial break in Star Trek Next Generation. So she was playing a, um, a nurse called uh, Lieutenant Sela. And she would sort of pop in and in the background and sort of uh, uh, have a, a little bit of supporting role every now and then. So that's where she got her foot in the door. So uh, not long after that, she managed to um, get an even bigger foot in the door by playing Kayla for, in uh, Star Trek uh, Next Generation. And then uh, Kayla's claim to fame was that uh, she had a romantic uh, entanglement with Worf. So, uh, if, as you know, sort of Worf had his son, Alexander. Well, that's that's essentially uh, Alexander's mum, Kayla, there. Um, on the, um, the, the third side there, we had the female Q from um, Star Trek Voyager. So what a fantastic role that would be to uh, to be able to play. And uh, then finally, uh, after about... Uh, five or six years, we got to see her yet again appear in a Star Trek uh, Enterprise uh, episode where she's playing a, uh, a second in command on a uh, Andorian ship with um, uh, Jeffrey Coombs' uh, character. So she's had quite a, uh, an interesting uh, selection of characters over the uh, the time. I remember in, um, uh, during the Austrek days, because I was a part of it, and all these episodes of Next Generation were first coming out, and she was extremely popular. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. The fans just really gravitated to her because it's not very often you saw a lot of female uh, Klingons. And, um, yeah, she just kicked a lot of goals, and people just really loved her presence. And the fact that she could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Worf, it was really, really good. And, uh, yeah, she was very, very popular for a long time, which explains probably why she popped up in the uh, other episodes. So, yeah, very cool. And next we have Rene. Don't ask me how to pronounce his uh, second name, but uh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> Ab 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 Moi, I think it is. Yes. I'll, I'll take that. I'll pay that because it's got the uh, Abba and Mamma Mia, <laughs> John and Dua. Dua. Yeah, so Dua, I know what you're talking about. I certainly Get on with it. But... <laughs> so we actually, uh, of course mostly remember him as uh, Odo, but we did actually see him um, uh, several years beforehand as the uh, the nasty pasty Colonel West from uh, Star Trek Episode 6. So he, he got a, uh, a role because he actually knew the, uh, the director, Nicholas Mayer. So that's how he got on board. And then, of course, as I said, uh, made such a big impression with us as uh, Odo in uh, Next Generation. And then sort of uh, uh, four or five years after that, uh, it was a bit of a surprise. I was watching the episodes of uh, Enterprise, and there he was in uh, one episode of Enterprise playing a, uh, uh, a character that had crash-landed on a planet, and we all thought that uh, he had um, a crew with him that uh, needed to be saving, but he was ultimately all there by himself, and all the rest of the characters were uh, holograms. I'll tell you a funny story. There was an Austrian meeting in like 1993 when Deep Space Nine had just come out and it was a bit of a party thing and there someone had put a bucket near the door with all this like green jelly in it and they had written <laughs> on it a bucket of Odo. <laughs> it was a bucket of Odo and it was just like that was very, very funny. And I think he actually appeared in Orville as well. So uh, I've only seen that episode once. I think he it was like, oh, it was almost like Star Trek yeah. actors. Um, it was like Boston Legal. If you're an ex-Star Trek actor, you turn up in Orville and I think he was in one episode. I think I, I am yeah. rusty with it. So uh, there you go. <clears throat> now, um, we also have uh, esteemed uh, English actor David Warner. So for him, it was uh, his first appearance was in 1989 playing a passenger, St. John Talbot in Star Trek V. So um, uh, 
quite a good uh, role for him. And then later on, we saw him playing Chancellor Gorkon in Star Trek VI. So again, sort of very much uh, in the movie side of things. He's doing uh, some big roles there. But uh, possibly, I would say his best role, and I think most people would tend to remember this one, is Gal Madrid from uh, Star Trek Next Generation, where he is the one that actually has to interrogate John Luke Picard and then sort yeah. of try and confuse him as to how many lights they, they are. So that was. You remember uh, the episode name? Oh, I've got it in my notes, so I can't forget. So it's Chain okay. of Command Part One and Two. Yep. So that that was what a what a uh, good selection of roles that he got to play. Yeah, unfortunately, in Star Trek Five, uh, he was on Nimbus Three as one of the three ambassadors. Mm-hmm. You had the Klingon ambassador and you had the Romulan ambassador, and it wasn't exactly the greatest sequence in the entire time. And I knew a lot of people who were very unhappy with how the Romulans were portrayed. The woman, she just, it just it just didn't me- mesh with anything they'd seen previously. But at the end, when everything's all going to the hell in the handbasket, uh, his character and her character seem to have hooked up. So maybe that was the very start of the whole Romulan-human relation thing. So make of that what you will. So uh, there you go. Now we have here um, actress Susanna Thompson. So we uh, originally saw her playing a small role as a Vulcan first officer by the name of Varel in Star Trek Next Generation. So that was 1992. The next year... She was playing a mental disorder patient in um, Next Generation as well. So, again, just literally the next year, but I guess this is one of the advantages of wearing makeup. And then um, a couple of years later, we saw her playing um, uh, Lenara Khan, the love interest to uh, Judd Zia Dax in Deep Space Nine. And then uh, lastly, what a big uh, role she got to play, and that was the Borg Queen in Star Trek Voyager. So... What a way to uh, to go through the ranks. You got your 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 um, uh, notes a bit asked about there, dude. She's a Romulan in that picture, not a Vulcan. Oh, okay. Why well, have yeah. I got Vulcan first officer? But anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She's wearing a Rom- she's wearing the Romulan tea cozy outfit as they got known as. But uh, no, very good. She got to play the um, the Borg Queen for a period of time, and I think at some point they brought in Elise Krieg, who actually was the Borg Queen and such in First Contact uh, mm. for the final bit. So. Um, yeah, it was uh, kind of groovy in the end, but uh, yeah, good stuff. So, one of the um, another Star Trek uh, fan favourites is, of course, uh, James Cromwell. So, here he is, sort of uh, starting off in a, 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 a small part as Prime Minister uh, Nayrock in uh, Star Trek: Next Generation. So he was playing a uh, essentially a bizarre, warped sort of super soldier of, of, of sorts. Then we saw him don the, uh, the makeup, and uh, he's playing a Uridian information officer in Star Trek Next Generation again, three years later. Here in the next one, we see him in Deep Space Nine playing um, a, a tax commerce minister. And lastly, of course, Zephyrin Cochran from uh, Star Trek First Contact. So that was 96. So this... Um, uh, indeed, a lot of uh, creative and versatile roles that he's played there. Um, here's an interesting one. Now, I'm just looking at this picture here. You notice, so this picture here, and you notice he's got the the pearl there, but he's got the collar going up around the neck on the jacket, right? Yeah. Well, they had a similar suit thing in Aliens. So, if you ever watch the movie Aliens, the suits that uh, everybody's wearing in the in the corporate scene, in the corporate sequence also have their collars up like that. So it's like. It's almost like one in actually inspired the other. So uh, there you go. Um, yeah. So there you go. So so Michelle's got an interesting comment. Um, comment that they're playing different actors in the same series. Uh, you probably don't have enough time to sort of ask them when you do sort of do see them. But uh, I guess that the actors themselves sort of favour one character over another. You've got to remember for some some of them, it's just like they only appear in one episode, so they just sort of come and go. Whereas for many others, it'll be something a bit long, you know, have a bit more longevity the way um uh jeffrey coombs is a good example you know where you only played in multiple episodes whereas some of the other characters he was only there for one episode so um yeah it's an interesting one but yeah it's a good question if you ever get a chance to speak to these people uh, and, and ask them so there you go very good yeah but back back when we uh start to actually have conventions you can attend yep geez remember those days um now this is a um a very well-known uh, uh character actor called uh, eric pierpont so He's, he's been in a lot of uh, different uh, science fiction shows, and just within the Star Trek universe uh, here, 
We had him appearing in 1993 as a character called uh, Vovo in Next Generation. The uh, next role he played was uh, Captain Sanders in um, uh, Deep Space Nine. So Captain S uh, Sanders was a, uh, I think, probably a, uh, his biggest uh, role out of what he played. Uh, then we have Kotar from Star Trek Voyager. Uh, and then in Enterprise, we saw him play a character called Charant. And lastly, on the uh, the right, he played a character called Harris, uh, who was uh, a member of Section 31. And that role he got to play for about four different episodes. So, uh, yeah, quite a uh, considerable collection. So for the Spaceballs fans out there, when they look at this character just here, and they go, oh, good old Captain Sanders wasn't prepared to go into battle. You say, what's wrong, Captain Sanders? Well, you could say he's Colonel Sanders, but we'll go with Captain. What's wrong, Captain Sanders? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. well, you, took, you took my joke because I was going to say a couple more ranks up the rung and he would have been a colonel. Colonel yeah, I couldn't, get, I couldn't work it out. So, yeah, you, you almost beat me to it. But as soon as you said Captain Sanders, I go, oh, that's just too good to pass up. So uh, there you go. So get old Captain Sanders. You've got yeah, no bones about that role. What can I say? Hey, so there you go. Good on your Captain. Get a leg up. <laughs> and move on, oh. shall we? <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, not everyone got to play uh, so much of a diverse character. But there was one actor that uh, really sort of didn't have to do all that much for his uh, different characters. And that answer is Brett Spiner. So, of course, we got to see him uh, playing um, Commander Data. But we also got to see him playing uh, Noonien Singh as well so, as his uh, brother, Law. So not really having to do all that much. But, uh, yeah, certainly uh, different characters, but uh, virtually the same look other than the, the, uh, the hairstyle. Yeah, he sort of missed a couple there. It was Sung, not Sing, and he actually played three different Sungs. So I think he played the younger version in Enterprise. He played the older version in Next Generation, and of course he played B four as well as uh, well as Law. So he's got a. They're all all interrelated with each other. But yeah, in terms of the songs, there was at least two of them uh, that he played, and uh, especially in the episode, uh, I think it's Brothers, where he plays Data, Law, and uh, Noonien Sung all in the same place. He's playing all three characters. And that was one of the really, really best examples of split screening and excellent, fantastic editing uh, between the three of them. So, uh, yeah, very, very cool. So uh, uh, he always plays it. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a very entertaining guy because he always plays a song. So there you go. Very good. <laughs> but, uh, yes, good stuff. Does he sing, does he sing for his supper? <laughs> does, he, uh, does he sing a song of sixpence? Get on with that. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the other actor that hasn't really had to do all that much, of course, is uh, Tim Russ. So here we have him in an episode of um, Next Generation where he was playing a mercenary. And then, of course, his breakout role was, of course, Tuvok in Voyager. And the only time he's really had to sort of get into uh, makeup was this uh, King on, Klingon character here uh, in Deep Space Nine called Takar. So, uh, yeah, he hasn't really had to do all that much uh, except for the one time to put on makeup. And but guess what, Jeff Rowe? Here's one for your honourable mentions list. Mark Leonard played three roles, which is true. Oh, well, so there you go. Uh, so uh, yeah. there's, there's, there's quite a few of them. When I actually did the research, I saw a whole truckload of names and all that. So I was, I was being very selective. But, uh, yeah, all Mark right. Leonard would also fall into this category. Didn't really have to sort of put on much makeup to uh, to change his roles. Yeah, he never played a human either. So he was either. Uh, so do you know off the top of your head what he played? Well, I mean, he played uh, Sarek. He also played a, uh, a Romulan, and um, he also played uh, Nunian Sung, I think. <laughs> you freaking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> now he played the Klingon commander in. Uh, um, uh, motion picture so there you go and he was the first person oh, yeah, to of course make. yes yes you're an idiot noonian song so there you go oh here we go they're all coming in now so uh look at this hang on we haven't finished yet so just everybody slow down guys just take a chill bill because we've got the least <laughs> the, i love the, the winner enthusiasm. but we have uh, a winner so this actor has played so many roles that i'm not even going to list them all but i will show you the picture and the uh, the winner of the most roles played in a star trek television franchise is born armstrong so uh there you can see all the different roles that he has played over the uh the different franchises so um not any ones of great note but 
hey, you know, he's he's certainly earned a crust from uh, Star Trek. Yeah, because one of the things, and you might be asking, like people might be asking, is that why do they get sort of cast again and again and again and again? Well, you've got to remember, they would have actually had a head cast done probably for one of the alien characters. And, of course, when they need a new alien, they go, well, we've already got this guy's head mould. We don't have to mould it again. We've just got to sculpt a brand-new alien mask, which is probably why most of them are all... Oh, sorry, I'm this one. Most of them are all aliens. So they've already got the mould, they've got the sculpt, so they've just sculpted over his existing head. And I know that because they don't, you know, whenever you bring a new, a new actor in, they've got to do the moulds. So that's probably why he um, uh, was one of the lucky ones to get all this work. So, But you are right, most of the time he's just buried under makeup and you wouldn't know uh, it's him. And, so, and well, if, if he's a versatile actor at the best of times, then multiple roles will be a good thing for him because yeah. they'll know that he can do these roles if they ever have to, rather than having to cast someone completely new they've already got someone that yeah they know what they're like on set and all that sort of stuff so it's simple just give them a call bring them in and chuck a new costume on yeah. them and, yeah. and as i say in a stretch armstrong Jaman. um it'd be kind of funny because you know he does a klingon yeah, everybody knows the klingons he does a romulan everybody knows the romulans and you get this dude down here or that dude over there and you go what the hell is this race it's like some race they've just pulled out their ass and they go yep yeah, you're playing this guy for one episode he's like okay there there you go so uh yeah exactly right and i agree with this yeah kelvin yes it's a cost saving measure so there you go and um and you're absolutely right aaron good acting definitely does help so if they do do a good job then clearly they're going to come back and uh, uh and return so how good is that so uh, yes, as I think um, Michael Dawn did actually appear as another person in a film, but I don't know which one. Oh, um, yeah, and that, that, he was in a, um, a courtroom scene. He was yep, playing. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, that was in uh, uh, Star Trek Six. That's right. Which actually, his character is the grandfather to Worf, so he's actually uh, like Justice Worf, whatever I believe is actually that. There's a link, so he's playing two different characters, but they're the same lineage. So uh, there you go. How good is that very when, good when vaughn was in town last he also loves playing the ukulele so uh that's uh, one of somebody's cons he, he pulled that out and made a few songs and the fans loved it as well yeah. i admire his pluck so a few people have said oh yeah uh robert duncan did a couple of sh uh, different characters and so did diana Mulder. yeah well once you got to vaughn armstrong those guys don't really count i mean talking lots of numbers <laughs> two characters means is nothing so uh, there you go. How good is that? What do you reckon that, guys? Pretty cool. Mm. There you go. So does Jeffro? Is Jeffro entitled to a round of applause for that one? Yeah, yeah, absolutely awesome work as always. Bit of trek heads. Very, very good stuff. Very good. All right, so we're going to sign off. So next week's our last episode. At the very least, make sure you tune in for that. It'll be a bit of a hoot and a holler. And uh, but in the interim, make sure you all <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. Stay Bye -bye. nerdy. Okay.